Okay. Okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 274 of Magic the Amateuring. That's beep, right. Beep, You're beep, listening beep, to a wow. podcast. That's my guitar That's, solo. Oh, I'm really glad because it's not like we have any music that interests no, the show. No, 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 no. This is th- certainly the first thing that people are hearing. Yep, correct. Separate from anything else. Yeah, and I've been working really hard on my sweet riffs. Yeah. My licks. Yeah. My Fender babies. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and there you These go. These are all definitely guitar terms. And uh, I just want to share them all with you today for yeah. episode 274. It's a special number. 274. You're listening to a podcast that's about magic, by magic, for magic. From magic. From magic. To magic. <laughs> that's right. Whether you are new to the game, returning to the game, or just want to be more involved in your Magic the Gathering community, we're here for you, buddy. My name is Maria, and I am one of your hosts. <laughs> My name is one of your hosts, and I'm a Megan. <laughs> <laughs> and on today's episode, all about Dominaria. Yay! Mm-hmm. The pre-release was last weekend, and it was super fun. Lots of people coming out and playing. Um, the scuttlebutt, if I may. I know we're not on Ixalan anymore, but the yeah. scuttlebutt has been... Wait. What? I don't think that scuttlebutt is an exclusively sailor term. <laughs> I think scuttlebutt <laughs> means gossip whether you're on a boat or not. <laughs> uh, I thought it was specifically boat gossip. <laughs> I don't think so. I think that it's like old British high tea time. Oh, you would say it at high tea? I think I would say the word hey, scuttlebutt at have high you tea. You heard the scuttlebutt about Mary and George. Exactly. <laughs> yes. I, I heard he saw her ankle in the bedroom. I'm going to Google, is scuttlebutt a pirate word? Great Google right there. Classic Google. But yeah, we're going to talk all about the pre-release. We went to not one, but two pre-releases this weekend. Had a super fun time. We're going to talk about what we build and what we thought think of the sealed format so far as we kind of look ahead to some Grand Prix that are going to be playing in sealed. Maybe we're going down to your uh, lo- local game store playing some sealed. What? It is a pirate term. <laughs> What does it say? Scuttlebutt, a term used to describe gossip, but originally the drinking fountain on a ship. So it's like around the water no cooler, way. but pirate style. No way. That's what they say. The, but it's a drinking fountain on a ship. Yeah, which actually makes me call it a question. When, when? Okay, like it's like a like a barrel. Okay, so they're all they're all huddled huddled around the the, the, the water, water barrel, barrel on exactly. this pirate ship. I love it. I'm so glad that they were talking about America's Got Talent back then in 1432. Exactly. On the ocean waves. Great and wonderful. (laughs) Anyway. Anyway, the scuttlebutt's been the sense great, so we're going to talk about that. And uh, look forward to draft, which we'll be able to do starting next week, so that'll be really exciting. That's right. We're also going to talk about Brawl. Yeah. Because everybody's getting into it. It's the party that if you're not attending... Why aren't you there? I don't know. It's like prom. If you're an upperclassman, you're going to it. Or you're going to go in the parking lot and just hang out and listen to tunes. Is <laughs> so what you did at prom? No, I went to prom too okay. many times. What do you mean? There was rules at our school. So you could go, you know, as a junior or senior, yeah. of course. But you could attend if you were asked by an upperclassman while you were a freshman or sophomore. Gotcha. So you went a bunch Ugh. and it just wasn't special anymore. Right. Like go twice if you're going to go. You know what I mean? Like that was too many proms. That's all I have to say. For all the people listening who are still in their prom going years. Yeah. <laughs> all dozen of you. <laughs> Please tweet us with the hashtag, my prom going years. <laughs> I should share a picture of what I wore to one of my proms because it's the most 90s dress that you could ever imagine. Nice. It was two pieces. That's um, all I'll say. My favorite prom dress was like a retro 80s dress. Cute. Um, that was like completely, the top half was like completely blue sequined. It was like electric <gasps> blue sequin. Yes. And then it had like, it was like this giant ruffle skirt that came down to my knees. It was like, like five tiers of like super roughly ruffles that were in like that metallic blue fabric. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It was great. We had some good stuff going on back then. (laughs) All right. We're also going to talk about modern. Megan's going to give us a modern update. What is she playing? What's she not playing? And why? That's Plus, right. We've got this uh, pack of Dominaria here that we won through hard fought battles on a pre release mm-hmm. that we're going to crack and play Flavor Text Theater movie pitches for you, our favorite game to play when we have a new set. So I'm pretty excited to see uh, what will be coming to theaters near you this summer. That's uh, Dominaria themed. That's right. That's how quickly we're going to churn these blockbusters yep. out. Yeah, it's going to be the production value. Insanely low. Yes. Very, very low. Very low. Speaking of low production value, but high goodness. 
<laughs> but high general value. Yes, you should check out uh, the completely and a- completely accurate. I can't remember even what the title is. The accurate and unquestionably, unquestionably accurate and oh goodness! Wow, we really did a great job naming this. We named a show uh, that you can watch on Wizards YouTube channel. Um, on YouTube, which is usually where YouTube channels are found. <laughs> the completely accurate and unquestionable. <laughs> the comple- completely the un- and unquestionably accurate. There we go. Okay. It's the completely and unquestionably accurate history of Dominaria. That's right. That Meg and I produced for uh, Wizards of the Coast, and it's the story of Dominaria starting back with the original set. So it starts with Urza's back in Urza's birth. day. Yeah, uh, and it's got some delightful cameos in it. Oh, wonderful! By which I mean performances, because they're not cameos; they're the real yeah. deal. They're in the the whole thing. Um, James. T- <laughs> Why did I? You almost I like his name? no. I like knew it, but then I was like, "That's wrong. That's someone else." <laughs> and I was like, "Nope, uh, that's correct." Okay, that's and great. Ashlyn Rose uh, are both in it, and so, Marshall Sutcliffe, and Marshall Sutcliffe. That's right. Who you may or may not know, <laughs> whatever. But they're all in it, and it's a great. <laughs> if you don't know him, <laughs> just go to a GP and look around for the tallest person. <laughs> And that's him. And say hello. Yeah. Wearing the nicest watch. Oh, yeah. It's definitely the nicest watch. This is a very long intro. It is. But I want, people to, I want people to learn about this. We spent a lot of time on these, and they're very funny. And if you want to yeah. get caught up yes. on the old story of Dominaria, it's great. check it out. It's going to be in three parts. Only one part yeah. has been released as of this recording. So two more are on the way. It is so much fun. Just a little bit more business before we start the show. And that is to say thank you. To everybody who's become a patron uh, since our last show, thank you so much. That's right, everyone. If you are supporting us on patreon.com slash mtacast, um, we so appreciate it. It really means the world to us. You keep this podcast on the airwaves and broadcasting out of your cat's mouth. Yeah, for as little as $1.25 an episode, go to, head over there and you can become a member of the Less Than 1% Club. Get access to our Discord chat mm-hmm. and an RSS feed that updates with everything that we put out. Everything we, we post out into the world, we also put on Patreon, so you have easy access to it there. And uh, it's wonderful because we're producing more videos than ever before as well. So it's not just the podcast that you're helping support, it's all of our stuff. That's right. Um, if you support us on Patreon, you'll also get um, the geographic location of a special mountain mm. where if you climb to the top of that mountain um, and shout into the heavens any question that you have, yes. um, we our voices will hear it wherever we are and we'll shout back at you. Yeah. Any questions? Um, the answers to your questions. No questions. That's too right. Silly. Um, there's also Discord, which you get access to. <laughs> so, <laughs> Which is another way to do that. Yes. <laughs> Thank you as well to cardkingdom.com slash MTACast. Head over there for all of your Dominaria needs. Do you need packs to draft with? Do you need cards to put in your standard deck or your brawl deck? Do you need a brawl general? That's the word I'm going to use. Do you need anything yeah. from like these sweet ultra pro accessories? Cardkingdom.com slash MTACast. You can even ask for a sticker with your order. That's right. If you're like, give me an MTACast sticker, we'd be like, say please. But even if you didn't, they'd give you one. Yeah, that's how nice they are over there. They really are. Just the best place to buy cards and stuff. It's delightful. Hey, everybody, let's talk about the Dominaria pre-release. It happened. It sure did. Next subject. Whoa, you want to move on to the next no. <laughs> segment already? We've said literally nothing about we said, we what, said what, that it what happened, happened. So I think we covered that. Okay, great. All right, Dominaria pre release. To mark the occasion of the pre release, I asked Megan a very yes. special question. I texted yes. her. I said, Megan, what if we wrote haikus about the pre release? That's right. I didn't reply. And Maria just sent me haikus until <laughs> one in the morning. That's a that's a true story. You know, sometimes you just feel like you need to write a haiku. Yeah. Um, also, I only didn't reply because I was really tired. Okay, that's fair. I wrote two because uh, you didn't reply. So I was like, maybe I shouldn't write these, but I'm going to send it I'm anyway. really sorry that you felt like I was squashing your artistic <laughs> inclinations like that. I really didn't Look, mean it was, to. Look, it was one in the morning. Let's get that's real. That's true. Like I said, I was tired. <laughs> Here is what I came up with. The, uh, to kind of wrap up the pre-release experience. Check out this saga! Cloud Raider Sphinx is better. Dominaria. <laughs> That's nice. Very That's, nice. And that one I, it will be explained a little bit later. Here's my second one. Hold on. Before we go, can I also yeah. tell you why I didn't reply? Sure. <laughs> okay. Not to, like, look, I, underst- I understand, um, like, the importance 
of haiku. Yeah. As a poetic form. Sure. Um, I think that they're great. That being said, I don't know that I understand them. What do you mean? Like when I'm reading a haiku, I'm like, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you mean? <laughs> I mean that like, I don't get it. Why it's five, seven, five. Exactly. Like, I, I feel like the, that, um, that structure to me doesn't feel inherently poetic the way like iambic pentameter does. What if it was six, four, six? That, I don't know. I don't know if that right, would work. All right, well, we got to do some experiments. Yeah, so anyways, I feel like haikus are hard for me. <laughs> That's fine. You only have to sit through one more. Okay. <laughs> Mox Ruby, Mox Jet, Power 9 has new meaning. Yargle Frog Spirit. <laughs> there you go. I'm done. <laughs> Those were delightful. I'm not saying that I don't like haikus. I think haikus are great. I'm just saying for some reason my brain hears a, a haiku and it's like, that's difficult for me to hold on to. I mean, it's very small. <laughs> it is very small. <laughs> Those were lovely. You know, uh, snap, snap, snaps. Yeah, we had to play tribute to Yargle, of yeah. course, because everyone loves Yargle. And you managed to open a foil pre-release promo Yargle. I did. Which is currently worth $3,000. Um, that's what I've heard. Or soon that's to what be. I've heard. Yeah, overall, let's just start big picture. What did you think of playing Dominari for the first time? I had a great time. Yeah. It was so much fun. Um, I felt like every game that I played was super interesting. Um, they felt like interactive. Yeah. They felt very like um a lot of the play felt like very intuitive. It was just like, oh yeah, like these games, um, they feel very much like classic magic. Right. It felt like a core like a core set, but being but like still having all of the interesting dynamics, like still tons of interesting play to them. But like there's something very like, like essential bedrock. Magic. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I think that has been that sentiment's been echoed all over with this set. People are finding it really nostalgic, like you said, to play these cards. I mean, there's literal reprints from the beginning of Magic, yeah. first of all. But second of all, it's a super fair point because I think the color identities in this set are doing precisely what their color wants to always do, right? Yeah. Red is hasty. It's burning your face. White is being vigilant and justice and making knights. You know, like yeah. this is very, very core Classic. to what white does. Green is just like, here's some big green beasties. Yeah. Here's a thalad. That's super green. Yeah. And black is like demons and stuff. Yeah. Blue is sphinxes. Yeah. A gin. Yeah. That's just classic magic right It does right feel there. very classic. Yeah. I really liked it too. It was a lot of fun. I didn't feel like any game was... I was never bored in any yeah. game that I was playing. There was always interesting things that were happening or that mm -hmm. I had to be aware of. Can I just say this to Sagas? A plus. Sagas are awesome to play with. Yeah. They're so much fun. I, I love, them. love them. Playing them, I'm sad that I won't see them all the time. Yes. Because I like them so much. They're so cool. Yeah. They make for so many interesting decisions. You're like... Uh, They're great. When am I playing this saga? Like Song of Fraley's, for example, is a yeah. classic, like build around me saga you want thalads and you don't want to cast it early in the game you want to cast it late and yeah. then just dominate with them yeah. uh phyrexian scriptures you have to be Great. even though that card is insane you know if your opponent has artifacts in play artifact creatures or whatever you have to yeah. think about that before you cast it and like absolutely think three turns down the road how am i best going to utilize mm -hmm. this or or like when you're playing against time of ice and you're just like oh yes oh like i want to attack them right now but like That'll tap my creatures. They'll get bounced later on. That sort of thing. Absolutely. Yeah. I played against a time of ice. Um, <coughs> oh, <coughs> bless. excuse me. Bless. Thank you. Thank uh, you. But it was really interesting because I, you know, I saw it coming. It was like, I see the future and the future is scary. So yes, I have to amend But like, it doesn't playing. matter. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I love the saga. It's fantastic design. Absolutely. I hope we see them in the future again because they're just so much, so much fun to play with. Yeah. Overall, uh, yeah, a super sweet set. Uh, some cards that I think were early, uh, early announcing themselves early on as overperforming. As I hinted at one in my first haiku was Cloud Reader Sphinx. That card's oh, busted. Yeah. Three, four, flyer for five. Scry two. Nice. I mean, like, seriously, that card's better than a lot of rares. <laughs> yeah. Flyers are really good in general, I oh, think. Oh, yeah. Um, I would say that my second draft was, like, carried basically by flyers. I was just like, Sealed, well. you mean? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, my second sealed pool is just sort of like, all right, like there's, I don't have a lot of like busted stuff that I'm doing, but like I'll play all of the Avon three twos that I yeah, have man. and just be like, eventually one of them will get through. And that, f that three, four body is just so good at that rate too. Yeah. Oh, Cloud Reader Sphinx. That, 
uh, brings me to a card that I was main decking. Yeah. In both of my in both of my sealed pools. Oh, here we go. Pierce the sky. Yep. Pierce it was so good. Two seven to a creature with flying. It's so good. You just need it. The yeah. flyers are out of control in this set. Yeah. Sarah Angel, everybody had one. Exactly. There's there's so many of them. <laughs> there's so many of them. Yeah. I was I never sad totally to fair. have it. I think that's same totally fair. with um I always main decked if I had it, enchantment removal. Yes. This is a very important point. Broken Bond, which is what I like to call Nissa's F U, is yeah. uh, a card you should be playing your main. Nissa's walk away. Nissa's walk away. She's done. Uh, what was the one you're playing in white? I can't remember the um, name of it. I don't remember the name either. It's, it's like two in a white. Yeah, for an instant, you destroy it and you gain four. Yeah. Great. Yeah, both these cards. So good. 100%. Yeah. Put them in your sealed deck if you're playing this format. 100%. They're so good. They're going to hit a saga. They're going to hit uh, some, like on Sarah's wings, which raise yeah. your hand if you lost that card this weekend. I'm raising my yeah. hand. I bet you are too. So I didn't because I was main <gasps> decking enchantment removal. See, this is where we need to be. Yep. Speaking of ways to deal with creatures are enchanted, blink of an eye. Yeah. Grossest card in the set. But oh boy. Yeah. can I just say that card is amazing. Yeah. It's so good. Bounce. Kick it. You can draw, draw a card. card. Oh, yeah. I right love this card. Be. This card is everything I ever want in my life. I'm not afraid of your fungal infections anymore. I'm not afraid of your, you know, five mana That's banishing impressive. light or whatever it's called. I'm not afraid of anything because I have a bounce spell. Yeah. I love this card. Great. Yeah, blue, very strong. I had a feeling of, uh, yeah. while I was playing this set. But I also had a lot of fun playing Thalids. Yeah. Thalid salads with slime foot. Little saprolings. Let me open, let me crack open my old box here and yeah. try and remember what I made. I had a slime foot in my second one. Slime foot's so great. Did you so, play slime foot? Yeah, I did. Oh, yeah. I cast him because I was playing this card, rare that's busted, Four Bearers Blade. Oh. So good. Sick. It's so good. Uh, and I loved that it like made me, because you know, like we've been so programmed to be like cast creatures in your second main phase. But it made me think about things like, I'm going to attack with this. Is there a creature in my hand that I want it to auto equip to? Yeah. Like if it dies in combat, like, okay, I'll play that creature now so that like I'm going to attack it and like now it'll auto equip to this thing if it dies. And I just made, there were times when I made a bunch, like a bunch of saprolings with like the, the four mana instant sword. Yeah. And then like you just put it on there. It's like, okay, I'm attacking you with a four, one trampler. Yeah. Uh, deal with it. And, and there's like, going to be more on the way. And if you block, like you're still going to take some damage and then it's just like this, it just auto equips. That's, yeah. It's so, yeah. And it's just like, okay, now it's going to go over here. Speaking of busted Too rares, bad. helm of the host. Oh gosh. Yeah. I had that one too. That card's nuts. On the first nutty. day. That was a different day, but Helm of the Host, so good. So Skittering Surveyor was a nice little artifact friend that oh, I yeah. had both days to help fix my mana. I played three color in across both days, which I think is important too. Um, and Skittering Surveyor was extra, extra important in helping me yep. get there. And I like this little card. I saw a lot of three color. Um, I played that. I played um, Grow from Ashes. Oh yeah. I played Great. two of those day mm -hmm. one. I had this sweet combo, Voltaic Servant with Traxos, Scru Scourge of Krug. 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 People were like, wait a second. Scourge of Krug. You didn't play a historic spell. How are you untapping Traxos? And I was like, hello, Volta Voltaic Servant on duty. Yeah. Untap. Boom. Nice. I've got a 7-7 seven, seven Trampler. That was a silly little combo that I had fun with. Pretty These knights, sweet. by the way. Knight of Malice yeah. and Knight of Grace. Ooh, I had a Knight of Grace. Great. These cards are very, very strong. And like, yeah. you think of Danatha. Uh, who I had in my pool the first day and uh -huh. was in my deck. She's gr gr ab absolutely fabulous. Yeah. But like Knight of Grace is kind of like a mini Danatha. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Anyway. First Strike Vigilance for yeah. two. Oh, boy. My Blessed pool, Light. Great. Gideon's Approach. Yeah. Like, are you kidding me? My first pool had so much removal. It also had Seal Away. Great. Yeah. Sapperling Migration. Um, Instant. Wait, no, not no, that no, one. No, no, no. I'm thinking, thinking of, of the four mana one, yeah. which I did not realize was an instant until someone cast it on me on their end step. And I was just like, or on my end step. And I You're was like, like, oh, that's an instant. The card's insane. Like, I'm really glad I was, I happened to be in a position where I didn't like get got by it. Yeah. But I was like, you should have waited because I did not know that was an instant. Like, you could have really got me. Especially if you're playing a card like, what's her name? Uh, Sise, Sise's Shana. Like Shana. Yeah. Shana. Yeah. 
boom, Shauna's huge. Oh, yeah. Sampling migration. We did a vlog, by the way, from our two pre-releases. You yeah. can check it out on this Wednesday on YouTube.com slash MTACast, where we reveal the playtest name of sampling migration. That's right. Is, We're not going to tell you right now. You have to go over you there. You have to watch it because it is so cute and adorable. So cute. And wonderful. So, yeah, check check that video out on Wednesday. But, yeah, I had a Shauna in my first, in my first deck, which I was splashing black for some two eviscerates. Nice. And uh, stuff like that. And Worth um, it. Had a Evera Halcyon Witness. Yeah. Which was, you know, busted, obviously. I splashed for a... Um, for the the five mana black white legend um who has death touch and lifelink oh yeah great that card's nuts. great card and then also for an eviscerate um and maybe oh and the uh the eldest reborn <laughs> i really like that card <laughs> that card is an uncommon yeah that's a scripture or excuse me a saga that's that's uncommon that i think feels like a rare yeah in a lot of ways it does that's one where they like first they sacrifice a creature then they discard and then you return a creature or planeswalker from um any graveyard to the battlefield yeah doesn't matter yeah you can steal from somebody super sweet i opened this mox amber as well it's not the foil one but um you know on it we also made a video prior to the pre-release that was top 10 worst rares you don't want to put in your pre-release pool yep and this was on our list it certainly was and a lot of people were fighting back about this yeah and i just want to say we were right we were right (laughs) do you know what we're not saying that you don't want it in general yeah i mean in general own one yeah great card to open and own is it great to put in your deck no it's not it's just like you know what we were right (laughs) I, it's so it's so like con- contrary yeah. to what so many people have been taught in Magic though. Like if you're playing a cube draft or whatever that has access to these or yeah, a mana like ramp, and, yeah, yeah, I'm taking it. it. But the thing is, it's just it's like not. I'm just not doing enough with it in these decks. Like I'm not casting my you know insane um, card that's in my cube. Like the the best creature that I can think of that you could possibly play this with is Tetsuko yeah. Umazawa. That's a two mana legend. Yeah. Like, how many two-mana legends are there even, though? I don't know. Not that many. But I did have a Tetsuko Day 2, and I had my Skittering Surveyor and my Voltaic Brawlers, yeah. and I was attacking for four unblocked with, with Tetsuko in that team, which was nice. kind of a fun thing, too. So, like, yeah, even though this set so on, kind of on its face seems a little simple, there's so many cool interactions that, that yeah. happened. Do you know what my opponent did to me once? What? One game. I was at 36 life. Oh, yeah, you told me about this. Yeah, this is also in a vlog. And I... Uh, was like, I'm sitting pretty right here. They had a slime foot out, a couple of sapperlings, thalids, excuse me, and they managed to essentially emerge. What's this, what is it called? Torgar. Torgar. And that makes my life total 10. <laughs> yeah. And then because they had um, slime, slime foot. foot, they were able to drain my life down to two. Wow. It was really insane. Anyway, that was a kind of cool thing that That's happened. That's super too. sick. Yeah. I am so excited to draft this set. It's not even funny. Yeah. Uh, Torgar can also bring your life back. Yes. Which is relevant and awesome. Torgar can go the other way. Yeah. Torgar can do a lot of stuff. Torgar. <laughs> what a buddy. 7-6. Yep. The size of a Phyrexian worm or no, it couldn't possibly be called that. The, which one? Primordial worm. Just like big worm. The big worm. <laughs> big worm. Was Size of the big worm. Call us for card names in the future. We got you. The big worm. We got you. Hey, everybody. There's a fun new format in town, and it wants you to play. That's right. It's recruiting because it's a general, so this is one big military analogy. <laughs> Brawl. Brawl. Yay. Yeah. So Um, what's the deal with Brawl? So Brawl is like Commander, where you have a, in this case, we're calling them generals, because they're smaller. I don't know Um, what the official word is, but I think that's right. Uh, So you have your your general, who sits in the command zone like a commander would, (laughs) Uh, and your your deck has to be the colors of that card. Um, It's color identity, notably, because if you play, what's his name? Joda, the Archmage Eternal or whatever. Oh, yeah, it's five color, technically. It is five color because... Because it, Joda has a five color, like, thing in his text box. Yeah, yeah. Thing in his thing text box. Thing in his text box. box is the technical yes, term. is the technical term for what we're saying. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then you make a 60-card singleton deck. So that means that 
aside from basic lands, obviously, uh, you can't have more than a single copy of Evan, any given card in your deck. Um, so they're trying to take, uh, and it's in, only in the standard format, whatever yeah. is standard legal right now. So they're basically trying to take uh, Commander, which some people can find very intimidating to get into, and narrow it down a little bit and say, hey, this is like easier. It's still going to be a ton of fun. You can play 1v1 or you can play in a multiplayer format. Yeah. So it's it's really, for me, this is a great idea because uh, Commander is, is very daunting, right? Yeah. They're 100 card singleton decks, and it's not just standard. It's like the history. It, it goes back a long time. The whole way. The whole thing. Yeah. Like, where do you People even People play start? some really busted Ooh. commander decks. The answer is the command zone. Listen to that podcast yeah. if you want to know more. But for me, for somebody like me, that was a little too much. Um, like, I don't know what a lot of the cards do, and I find that intimidating. So mm -hmm. this, I think, is a fabulous middle ground that we can have to play something similar to commander. Like, your life total is still 30 or whatever. Yeah. Um, that, But it isn't quite as scary to get into. Yeah. So I'm all about this. It's live on Magic Online. Yeah, you can play Magic Online uh, right now. Right now. It's going to be in Magic Arena pr pretty soon, probably. Yeah. Um, and I am down. Like, I'm going to build... Um, my first deck that I wanted to build was a Tiana Ship's Caretaker deck. That's right. Because Get those auras. Get those equipments. <laughs> get that Valduck. I love pants. And she duck, is duck, all Valduck about... and Tiana. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and Valduck's definitely in there. And I'm going to have all these elemental smashing face... Um, yeah, and get my auras back from the graveyard, put them on creatures, yeah. and uh, keep attacking. I think this sounds super fun, yeah. and I'm going to make it. I don't think it'll be very good, but I do think that hopefully once or twice it'll work, and then I'll be like, oh, this is sweet. I was thinking today, maybe I want to make like a Moldotha the Gravetide. Whoa. Because that card is that's, so cool. That actually sounds like a sick idea. Yeah, right? Like you can like get a bunch of stuff in your graveyard and then you have uh, Moldotha and then you can like play a bunch of other thi like things get back, it back in the graveyard. I'm excited. So it's like the sweeter Scarab God. Exactly. Do you know what? If you play Scarab God in Brawl, Seriously. you're evil. <laughs> What are you you're doing? Evil. Why? We get it. Why? You're, we get it. You're a big time spike and you're trying to win. And you're probably right. Everyone is playing one copy of Sorceress Spyglass. Yes. Currently we in their brawl you. deck. Um, because, because of the yes. Spear of God. Yeah. Um, but yeah. That's that's the deal. Like, um, And it has to be a legendary creature for, yes, your, general. for your general. Hence uh, Tiana. Tiana. Um, but also why... Dominaria is a great place to start with it. Absolutely. Because there's all of these legendaries. You could choose from so many different things. Yargle could That's be your right. general. Yargle. I don't know what your deck's deal is, but... It's mono black Yargle. Yargle can swing on in. That's right. For nine damage. Nice. That sounds fun. Um, I was playing around with this with just like some decks that I found uh, online. Uh -huh. And uh, like you said, Sorcerer Spyglass is necessary because you need to stop the Scarab God. Mm -hmm. Or if other people have like Vraska, for example, you can have Planeswalkers as your general and you need to stop their shenanigans. Yeah. Uh, that does it. Scavenger Grounds is another good include for all decks to stop graveyard um, <coughs> stuff that would get <coughs> Megan's general right, good. right out of the way. And, uh, Rude. Yeah, it is rude, like, when you think about it. Somebody said uh, that Brawl, a chief of compliance, is absolutely busterino and should be banned in Brawl. Wow. So also probably don't play that. if you Busterino. Don't <laughs> Unless you want to win a Brawl tournament or something. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, once we have our lists finished, we'll share them with you because... We're excited. I, I want to test them out. Yeah. Um, if you've got a Brawl General that you've got your eye on, tweet at us with the hashtag Brawl for All. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. I saw you coming in for the landing. Yeah, and I was, it was looking 10 for 10 out of 10. Thank you. Brawl for All. <laughs> Give us that name. sweet, sweet Is modern. It? Wait, I don't remember what you said your name was at the co-host. Give me the That's sweet, <laughs> sweet modern update. All right. So the last, the not last the last. time we met. The, that's right. Um, so tomorrow, which is today for you. Yeah. Or yesterday. You Tuesday, know what? On April. Tuesday. This day in April. 23rd, 24th? I don't know. 24th. 
Uh, we are playing in the semifinals. My team is uh, playing in the semifinals of the Team Modern Super League. Team Minva. That's right. And I'm super excited um, because we are, you know, we've, we've gotten this far. This is incredible. You are the ultimate underdog team. For yeah. sure, like well, well, the brew crew, the is brew also crew playing. also, yeah. So both of you are were the underdog teams, but it was like nobody, you know, if they were coming in and they were betting on this whole thing, they wouldn't be like, I'm betting on this team that yeah. has never been to a pro tour. That's right. right. Well, Sam, Sam, Sam has. has. Sam's top. Um, but yeah, um, we were but playing yeah. against like hall of famers and yeah. multiple pro tour top eighters. Um, but I'm very excited because tomorrow one of our decks that we have submitted is white blue taking turns. Oh yes, many of you know it's a pet deck of mine. Yes, we are afraid that it's the one they're going to ban. Why? Um, because it seems it feels solid against a lot of their field. They have a couple of decks that are just sort of like um, creature decks or decks that are very good against creature decks. Yeah. And so it's just like, oh, if you have a slate of decks that are good against creature decks, you want to take out something that is not a creature deck. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. I really hope that I get to play it. I would be very happy if that were the case. Taking turns is like you distilled to your purest form in magic. It is. Do you know when you draw the most cards? When you're taking extra turns. <laughs> it's a delight. <laughs> um, Dictative Crufix. You get to draw two on your upkeep. Oh, Who doesn't want to do that yeah. on your draw, on draw, draw step, I mean? Who doesn't want to? Um, but we've also got uh, Sam has got Tribal Zoo. Wow. Uh, which is a weird little five color aggro deck with uh, the spell Tribal Flames, which yes. is one in a red and it deals X where X is the basic lands uh, types among basic lands you control. And so it's like not basics even. I mean, it's like equal to the types of lands. Yeah. So basically you deal five. With yeah. You two, just deal five. Yeah. Two, to casting cost spell. It's pretty sweet. We've got um, humans. We've got Grishel brand where you Oof. get back yourself, get yourself back a Grishel brand. That deck can yeah. be fast and brutal. Yes. Um, I've seen it win on turn two. I have been yeah. smashed on turn two by that deck. I have had an opponent. It wasn't my turn two. I was playing it, but they like, it was against um, blue white control. Yeah. And they like tap out on their turn two for a search for its Kanta. And like on my turn three, I just kill them. <laughs> it's like, okay, you tapped out. Here we go. <laughs> Delightful. Uh, yeah. And then uh, Titan shift again. Okay. So which, so. Um, are, do you know which ones of these you might be piloting? Um, I would probably pilot uh, turns and Titan shift. Okay. Um, I've played the tribal zoo deck a little bit. Not my style, but if it comes, you know, push comes to shove, I'll try it. Is this different? Um, in the, is it just the tribal flames that are, is why you're playing it as opposed to like um, normal zoo? It's just that, like, I think it, this is Sam's pick. So the way we did this one is that we each picked a pet deck. Okay, that's cute. And then we each picked a second pet deck, actually. <laughs> um, and so this was his pick because he loves aggro, and he's done, like, regular burn. He's done uh, the red-black burn. And now he was like, I want to try this tribal zoo deck. Oh, that's and awesome. I was like, okay, yeah. Well, um, I love see, see, seeing something new, too, yeah. in modern. It's a, it's a sweet deck. And then the other team, we're playing against CFB. Uh, amongst them is recent GP Hartford champion Matt Nass. Oh, no. And they have Kark Car Clan Ironworks in their list. And I was like, it felt like that was going to happen. Yeah. I felt it coming. Yeah. I, but you get so a banana deck. Might, that's true. But I don't know. That deck is stupid. The deck really is. It, I, this is how I feel it's about pretty wild. KCI combo. I feel that it is incredibly <laughs> consistent. Yeah. And um, you can win, you know, turn three win is not um, anywhere near out of the question for that deck. Yeah. It is a misery to play against <laughs> and misery to play. Probably. Maybe you're having misery fun. to play. against. I don't know. You just have to sit there <laughs> as this artifact yeah. deck is like essentially like doing like crazy eggs things against you. And uh, I was commenting on this deck once at the GP. And uh, there's a Boggles player playing against this deck. And it was like turn two or turn three. And they were going off. And the player just kind of like turns around and looks up at the camera. Face, <laughs> face down camera and just like, what is my life? Yep. <laughs> yep. And I'm like, I feel you, buddy. This... This deck, oof. Yeah. But speaking of hexproof, that was Sam's other pick for his pet deck. Oh, was deck. it? He was like, I still want to play it. Yeah. And I was like, all right, whatever you want. Whatever it's pet deck want. week. Pet deck week. Yeah. And we, you know, I'm starting to think about, you know, Vegas is coming around the bend. It's true. What are we going to play? She'll be coming around the bend. 
She'll when be coming. She comes. <laughs> She'll be coming round the bend. She'll be <laughs> coming round the bend. <laughs> She'll be coming round the whiskey bend. casino She'll be and her coming cup. round the bend. She'll be <laughs> around the bend. <laughs> Come see Megan's cover band, uh, Hillbilly Songs, <laughs> sort of rewritten volume two. Oh my god. Performing down at the steakhouse Thursday nights. That's right, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> what if you went, what if I was like, Maria, come to my show, and then you came, That's and that was what, what happened. Was. I would, well, first of all, I would worry that <laughs> there was some, something was happening. You'd be worried about me. Yes. You'd be like, is yes. Megan okay? What's going on? <laughs> What has she been happening? abducted? Like, is she body snatched right now by some alien? Yeah, if you're like, come down to the steakhouse and watch my hillbilly remixes. And then it was songs like I literally just sang what I just sang. You'd be like, I would what be happened? on the phone to the ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> One verse in. Oh my! One verse goodness. in. <laughs> <laughs> What has it been like for you to learn um, these new decks? Like, you know, you weren't like a Grishel brand player or anything like that. No, and I also learned Storm. Storm for um, this tournament. For the last two weeks. Um, I've really enjoyed learning. It's great. I feel like I have... Oh, and Dredge. I've learned Dredge Dredge, because of it. Yeah. I feel like I have, like, a way more comprehensive understanding of the modern format now, um, which is a lot of fun. Yeah. Like, I just enjoy it. I enjoy knowing about it. And you have that knowledge in your head too when you play yeah. against these decks oh that's one of the biggest things in fact i was talking with someone about like how to play um red green titan shift against dredge yeah and they were talking about like when to crack a relic of progenitus um and i was just like i felt like i had such a better understanding because they were just like they were thinking about it from the perspective of like citing all of these other titan shift players and they're just like well this person you know thinks that you should do it then and i'm just like yeah but do you know what uh, what i'm thinking about and who i've talked to was like other dredge players right who are just like yeah this is when it's worst for me hmm. for you to do that and i feel like it's so much like it's really important obviously to talk to people who are very good at piloting the deck that you want to pilot but it's also really important to make sure that you're stepping out and being like if you talk to a burn player being like if you're a burn player, what's the worst thing that I can do in this situation exactly. for you as a burn player? For you. Um, if like as a dredge player, what's the worst thing that I can do in this situation for you as a dredge player, as opposed to only ever talking to people who have like are looking at it from the exact same angle that you are. So I feel like it's been super helpful that way. And, you know, coming to your own conclusions too. Like, you know, there's lots of people who are very good at magic and say words about it, but your own experiences are equally as valuable, yes. you know, like, Oh man. Do you want to hear a weird story about that real quick, actually? Because yeah. we talked about it before. Yeah. This relates to the pre-release. Okay. Um, in round two of the first pre-release, I sat down across from someone, and we were just, like, doing the little chit-chat thing. Yeah. It's, like, a, like a kind of an older guy. Um, and I had played... We had played here, like, two different leagues online of Sealed Dominaria. Yes. And I played one round there. And so I was, look, like, thinking about this, and we've said this before, like, it feels kind of slow, don't you think, Dominaria? Yes, I agree. Like, I've had multiple people not cast... I've had so... The majority of the games, no one casts anything until turn three. Yeah. Which is unheard of. Like, a lot of times, people are casting thing on, things on two, and you want to make sure that you have a lot of twos. And Your in this stuff format, can get outclassed very quickly, too. There's a four, exactly. four, 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 so, like... Yeah, and, like, it's, if you're just playing, like, a two, two for two... Um, and like you put that in instead of a four, 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 like you're going to be in trouble. Yeah. Anyways. So like with all of this and being like skittering surveyor, popular three drop of the format. Yeah. And you're, it's a one, two that gets you a land. <laughs> so thinking of all of this, we're chatting. I'm just like talking. I'm just like, oh yeah. Like Dominaria feels, feels really slow. Yeah. And he's just like, oh no. <laughs> And I, my gut instinct was to be like, oh, I must be wrong. And then I was like, wait a second. I'm I just, not wrong. I just played all this stuff. Like, I, I all played this all this stuff. And then I just, like, smashed his face in. Yeah, man. Like, I completely, like, 2 owed him easily. And it was just like, oh, why did I think for a minute that I was wrong? Trusting yourself. Yes. Great in magic. Like, when Anyways. I played Grand Prix Vegas last year in Modern, and I played with the little Slippery Boys... Yeah. And I played main deck Leyline of Sanctity. Yeah. And uh, very popular choice for people now. Back then, people were like, You're playing that in the main? Like, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, Well, I feel like there's a lot of discard and yeah. all this kind of stuff. So I'm doing it. And now, like, everybody does it. Yeah. Death Shadow is huge at the time. Trust your instincts. Like, you don't want to get freaking thought seized all the time. No way. 
Anyway, yeah. I'm still mad when I get thoughts. <laughs> 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 If you were out there wondering, does Megan still hate getting thoughtsies? The answer is definitely. Who likes getting thoughtsies? I don't know. Hey, everybody. Before you listen to more of this, we're going to say listen to this. Yes. Which is us saying thanks to Ultra Pro, one of the sponsors of this show. Thank you so much, Ultra Pro. Head to their website, ultrapro.com, or check out their merchandise on a site like, card, site like cardkingdom.com slash mtacast. They've got great gear for all of your magic needs. They're like the number one name in play yeah. mats. It's like you use yes. an Ultra Pro play mat, right? Um, so, and also, if you've been watching the video, you see me fidgeting with um, one of their new, their their little relics. Yeah, these are cool. Um, which are the little, it's like you can use it as a life total thing. Um, you can use it to mark the size of tokens. I like this one because it's a Tarmogoyf. And it's like And it has foil. these little wheels and it's foil and you can mark the size of a Tarmogoyf. I love it. that. So it's like, how big is this current Tarmogoyf? Oh, it's a 7-8 because of Special T. Special T. We learned about that on That's Judge right. Rob's episode. Yeah, and uh, these are these are pretty cool. You can buy all their new stuff. They've got this really cool, like, golden abacus that you can use to keep track of your That's life. That's right. Learn how to use an abacus and impress literally everyone around you. Yeah. Gravity dice uh, are always the dice. People are like, where did you get those things? I call oh, them space dice. But space dice. Yeah, they're so good. Oh, man. What? I wish I knew how to use an abacus. Well, you know what? We're going to Google it after this episode. I'm going to go Google it. If you want to teach Megan yourself, you can uh, tweet at us with the hashtag abacus. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a, 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 just the word abacus, but with a capital, capital U-S. U-S. Yes. Perfect. And, and Perfect. we'll learn together. <laughs> so as a reminder, this week's hashtags have been abacus. <laughs> yes. Br- brawl, brawl for all. all. <laughs> with the, tweeting the name of your brawl general. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we had one more and I don't remember. Did we? Yeah, we did. Oh, I only thought we had two. No, I think we had one more. What was it about? I don't know. Okay, well, whatever. Tweet at us. At MTA Cast. The Party for Magic is on Twitter, so check mm-hmm. it out if you haven't already. We're also on Facebook, by the way. Facebook.com slash MTA Cast. Uh, and Instagram. That's right. As MTA Cast on the gram. So gram. Nice. Gram, gram friend us. Gram it up. <laughs> Good gram it up. But yeah, thanks to UltraPro.com for being uh, an excellent sponsor of this show. Flavor Text Theater, Dominaria Movie Pictures Edition. Ooh, whoa, whoa. Oh, the first real life cracking of a Dominaria pack. Whoa. We got a cleric token and a sweet island. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to mix this up in my All hand. Right. So we're going to uh, give you some movie pitches based on the title or flavor or whatever we, the heck we want on these cards. Or uh, perhaps uh, TV shows, that kind of thing. And if you're a producer out there working for some big company, you know what? Um, give us a ring. Yeah, because we know that these are... These are A+. Plus. Gold. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> you got one? <laughs> yep. Okay. Okay, so... um. We're uh, we're in a world that's like in a world in a world that's sort of like um, post. It's kind of weirdly like post rats of Nim or something like that, (laughs) where there used to be like, you know, like um, rats, you know, basically person rats. Yeah. Who like are very like thoughtful and all of that sort of stuff, you know, cognizant rats, Um, except this world has something like there's a huge apocalyptic event in the rat world and they've regressed to oh. being just the normal rats that we know wow. um and so it's about like the the travails of one rat who discovers rats actually used to be basically like people and have like all of these yeah you know like amazing skills and this a whole culture of you know a whole rat culture and then it has like a very twilight zone ending on it where you find out that actually this is the world that we live in oh. and the past that was we know it was actually populated by, by rats sentient rats, rats. It's called Rat Colony. <laughs> I'm watching that. <laughs> My, mine is a, uh, I want to say this is a Lifetime original film. Um, and w- what it is, is there's a Boy Scout troop. And it's uh, and it's really cool. And there's a lot of little kids in this Boy Scout troop that are just really love scouting. And one day a new kid comes to join the Scout troop. But this new kid has special powers. Like he seems very in tune with the forest and the trees and can like speak to plants and Ooh. feel their feelings. And as uh, one of the boys who's a tattletale and like, you know, the, the mean rich kid tells his parents to try and get this kid kicked out when they find out he's an elf. He's an elf. No. Get out of the Boy Scouts. You're not allowed. 
But then, of course, there's a big moment where he's able to save the Boy Scouts through his tree and nature knowledge that's innate in his bones. And uh, they let him uh, rejoin the troop and they manage to save a forest or something. I don't know. Lanowar Scout. <laughs> Nice, nice. <laughs> um, okay, this is um, the story of like a um, uh, a boy in contemporary times who decides to be like a traveling bard of old, oh, but yes. in contemporary times. Um, I love it. And it's like a little bit of magical realism because as he's going along, like, you know, sometimes he like gets himself out of scrapes, kind of using an ability that you're like, it feels like kind of uncanny. Mm. Um, and he like tells stories that are very immersive for people. So they're always willing to like house him like in an old school bard way. Um, anyways, cool. and his name is Gitu, I guess, because it's Gitu Journey Mage. I'm I'm in for that movie. Right, as well. I kind of watched That's that. Cool. And like, I like a, that. Uh, in my mind, it has like a very. You remember Beasts of the Southern Wild? No. Movie is great. I don't. It's never so heard good. It. Okay. Um, it has like that kind of like vibe to it. I can it feels see the very vibe contemporary. for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, it feels very contemporary magical realism. Yeah, it's I love really it. Really good. Okay. Anyways, all right. Beasts of the Southern Wild is really good. Go <laughs> this on. movie is about a, somebody who works in a greenhouse, and she is really bad at her job. <laughs> Like, she kills anything that goes in there. Like, yeah. they're like, Sarah, you have got to not be terrible at this. Are you going to be fired? You know, you're gonna just going to be fired. You're horrible. Every plant under your care withers and dies within, like, a day of you coming into contact with it. Problematic. And then, of course, a mysterious figure comes into the greenhouse and is like, I'd like to sell you this. This is very little shop of horrors. And uh, and I can't, I can't, you know, but it looks great. You know, put it up in your window. Well, she takes care of it, of course. And she's like, I'm just going to kill this thing again. I'm going to be fired. Well, the truth is she does kill it. She kills it. But when it dies from it, blooms a tree that has Ooh. like, um, that has like money on it. <laughs> I don't know what. It's a tree that grants something. Like, maybe it grants wishes. Maybe it has money on it. I'm not really sure. Okay. Um, but when... And she's, like, becomes very famous from her for ability to, to kill these plants, but she is bred. And upon their death, something new and even better grows from it. Wow. And, Weird. Uh, but the problem is, when she spends the money that she's um, found off of these trees, or when anybody does, then uh, bad things happen to them. <gasps> Weird. And so she has to stop and start over. Death Bloom Salad. Oh, I like it. <laughs> Weird, but I like it. In my mind, the things that she kills her in a basement. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, this is like Braveheart, but Goblins, Goblin War Chief. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, I didn't have that much time to think this one. Okay. Um, I can do my next one if you want. Oh, uh, okay. Because I was thinking about of Okay. It. Okay, so this is kind of, um, uh, there was an old comic that I used to read called Archie and Mahidabel. It's actually like a book. I think Anyways, we talked about it before Yeah, we've on talked the show. about it weir- before, weirdly. Um, but it's like uh, a cat and a roach who are friends. I think she's a roach. I don't remember it actually now. Weird. Anyways, but one of the stories that has stuck with me for forever is um, how they, one of them was walking. I want to say it was the cat was walking by a graveyard at night. And, um, and all of the ghosts of the people who are buried there can't leave because they're tethered still to their bodies. Uh, and so this is a story like Spooky. that, except it is like a, it's a very, very, like an, an ages old um, grave site and kind of like a very rural, remote place. And it's just basically like the goings on of all the ghosts that are still it. tethered there in that area. It's called Woodland Cemetery. That's great. It's also a rare. I love that. Isn't okay. it weird the stuff that sticks with you? It, it sure is. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, this this movie <laughs> is about parallel universes and uh-huh. alternate realities, which are woven in st- um, amongst us mm-hmm. uh, on a daily basis. And what happens to this protagonist is every time they go to sleep and wake up, they're in a new parallel universe. So uh-huh. everything is, you know, is kind of like eerily the same and yet a few things will be different uh-huh. and they're trying to you know will the next leap be the journey home will be the leap home or whatever yeah. uh blink of an eye nice uh okay so this this is a uh this is a contemporary teen movie um <laughs> and it's about um a boy in high school who accidentally runs afoul of some school witches Ooh. who it turns out are like legit witches yes and he keeps he keeps bumbling around and running afoul of them and they keep cursing him again and again and again <laughs> and it's just like a classic like teen yeah. kind of like comedy like rom-com uh it's called arvad the curse <laughs> that's great Mine is also a teen movie uh, about a track star who um, all of a sudden one day uh, beats another player, another runner from another school arrival, and um, 
Oh gosh, I'm, this is gonna be another witch thing. I gotta, I gotta rethink this. Okay. okay, it's a track star. They're a track star. They somehow get injured in while they're running around the track, and they can't, they can't run anymore. And it's the, the worst thing that's ever happened to them. They're like hobbling around. I'm imagining their ankle still broken, like half, turned wow. at a ninety degree angle, yeah. uh, and um, their life is over. However, one day they're just like so mad. They still have the cast on, and they're just like, that's it. I'm just going to still run no matter what, because I have to run. Wow. And uh, they run, and it's like a really weird, awkward run. But what not happens... Not medically recommended BTW. <laughs> yes, okay. yes. No, this is not a medical podcast. No. <laughs> uh, when they run, some they've, they've activated some kind of magical, like... <laughs> thing that happens when they're uh-huh. running in this bizarre way that's able to influence events around him. What? Uh, yeah. Run amok. <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, okay. So this one is, um, this is like a conspir- a, a film about a conspiracy where uh, in this world, yeah. there was a bunch of footage of aliens, like alien landings on Earth that people were like, this is proof. And it was like available on all of these. Like you could like see video footage of it. But uh, it keeps getting like it keeps disappearing from Whoa. from the internet where people are trying to watch it and they're just like there's right like proof where is out there but it just keeps getting pulled away pulled away and then it, uh so one woman goes on a search for the footage she's like it's got to be right it's got to be held somewhere all of this proof has got to be somewhere uh and eventually she finds a trail towards the the one guy who's been trusted to pull all of this off of the web and just like store it Oh, it's called Vodalian Arcanist VO, VOD Video on Demand Alien <laughs> Arcanist. <laughs> That's definitely an X Files episode. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, this film is uh, uh, an episode of Twilight Zone again. Mm-hmm. This set lends itself well, in which a woman who has been spurned by uh, a boyfriend to did her wrong goes to see you know a, a, a fortune teller of some sort, and uh, the fortune teller is like, okay, you want to get back at this guy? That's what you got to do. You've got to go and get some of his blood and mix it in with this vat of fat that I have in my office. Oh my god! <laughs> We're going to make a candle out of it. And once the candle burns all the way down to the bottom, your heart will be healed. And she's like, oh, sick. So this is probably going to kill him or whatever, right? Whoa. Like, okay. I am in deep. Yeah. Like, I, I got into myself this. into this, and I'm going to do it. And she manages to, like, s- sneak into the, let's say, let's say he, there's some easy access to his blood somehow. I don't sure. know what. She works at an American Red Cross sure, and is a regular donor. There we go. And uh, she gets his blood, the fat, and the whole thing. And um, as, as she burns the candle, which burns very slowly, she realizes uh, as she goes through her, you know, this takes like a week or so, in her life, um, people will just uh, start to stop responding when she's talking or they won't know that she's in the room. Uh, like glass doors activated won't open when she tries to go through them, <sighs> stuff like this, until she realizes when it's too late that when the candle comes to the bottom, she has burned her own life out. Whoa! <laughs> Creepy! <laughs> and so like, she's like, uh, the person's like, well, you're healed now that you'll never feel pain ever again. Wow. Yeah. Blood tallow candle. Blood tallow candle. That... Is great. <laughs> That's great. Let's that could, do it. That could be a legit one. Let's make that. Okay. Done. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one I pick. Let's make that movie. Okay, we're making okay. Blood Tell a Candle. Yeah. Uh, all right. So this one is like a this is like once again a nineties rom com um about a woman who uh is just like she's she's like a like the has it all businesswoman. Yeah. And she's so good at everything. Um, but she keeps finding that she's not satisfied in her job. So she keeps leaving and starting new jobs. And like immediately the people in the new job also love her because she's just so good at everything. She's just like consummate businesswoman. She's great at it all. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't matter until finally um, she, she just keeps looking and she's like, why am I not satisfied with these jobs until someone is like, Hey, did you ever think that it's like, it's not your ability to do the job? Well, it's like your emotional commitment what the job means to you she's like oh cool but it's called joyra's familiar because like she's familiar with that job (laughs) joyra's familiar exactly like oh can can joyra's familiar exactly can joyra handle filing this court case joyra's familiar oh joyra's familiar no big deal (laughs) 
My final film is uh, about somebody who just lives a pretty ordinary existence um, and wishes for something better in every, in every day. And one day, and one day they find out that they're actually a, a god. <laughs> <laughs> they were wow, they okay. were a god and now it's time to activate their powers and become a god of this land and uh you know all the trials and tribulations that come from just finding out all of a sudden you're, hey, a, god. you're a god <laughs> invoke the divine nice <laughs> pretty sure that's got to have been made a movie yeah something like that like evan almighty or whatever yeah, yeah. there we go but we could make a better one we'll this make is a better, like upper better. Yeah. okay uh this one is about um a guy in like olden times um who is apprenticed to a knight uh and he's like you know he's the person who has to just like always like saddle his horse and like polish his armor and do all the drudge work oh yeah i forget what that person is called squire squire thank you so this is just like this knight's squire um and then his his knight is like training for all of these tournaments uh and he needs better and better practice companions and so he has to uh he has to start being like the target practice essentially <laughs> like the practice against the knight when he can't find yeah. other people to joust against and so it's basically just like a year in the life diary of this squire who's just like having to you know go up and and joust his his knight all the time and his the knight's name is lance it's jousting lance <laughs> Oh, I'm watching that. Yep. Yep. It's like a knight's tale. Yeah. Basically. I love a knight's tale. All right. These cards. <laughs> yes. Entering into our giveaway for the month of April. Which, yeah. Uh, the hot link for that is uh, posted bl below the video on YouTube and in the show notes for this if you listen to the YouTube podcast version. YouTube could have a woodland cemetery. Yes. This could this could all be yours. Plus other uh, awesome stuff that we can uh, that we give away every month with our Gleam giveaway. So go and uh, check that out if you haven't entered. Try your luck. Well, cats and kittens and everything in between, thank you for listening to episode 274 of Magic the Amateur. If you're like, wait, I'm a dog. That's between a That's cat between and a kitten. That's between a cat and a kitten. It yep. really is. Everything you wouldn't know, but on this planet is between that. That's right. Those two posts. If you don't believe us, Google it. <laughs> Yeah, next episode, we're probably going to be able to talk about Dominary Draft for the first time, which is going to be exciting. Ooh. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel for some hot vids, including a literally hot video when we crack open a box of Dominaria and uh, are forced by ourselves to eat hot spicy chips, hot chip challenge. That's right. Uh, coming very soon, by which I mean tomorrow... Or already now, if it's after Tuesday, April 24th, yeah. you can watch our pre-pre-release video. Or just a pre-release. Wait, nope, that's what I meant. Pre-pre-pre-release. <laughs> our pre-release vlog. I don't have words anymore. <laughs> It's real fun. You can come along with us yeah. and watch us as we open our pools and be like, oh, this is what I would have built. Or like, good job. Or that was cool. What is time anyways? You know, Google it. I will. <laughs> we Thanks have so much to Google. Again, as always, to everyone who supports the show on Patreon, patreon.com slash MTA cast. Did you already say that? No, not now. Not now. Wow. Earlier on, I did. Good job. But if me. time is like happening for you, strangely, it could have been five seconds ago. It really could have been. You never know. But yeah, thanks to everybody. Come and join our family. If you haven't yet, uh, we highly encourage you to do it. Only a small fraction of our listeners and viewers actually do this. So it me it's uh, extra super important for people to join if you have the means. So thank you to so much. Patreon.com slash MTACast. And thanks again to Card Kingdom. CardKingdom.com slash MTACast. We're so very happy and proud to have them as a sponsor of the show. And everybody who's ever used Card Kingdom says, you know, they're just the, the premier spot to be able to do magic mm -hmm. business. Anyway, that's our episode, you know. Yeah. Hashtag brawl for all. 